Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Work at Home Rockstar Podcast. I'm very excited for today's guest. This is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, one of America's leading behavioral management specialists. And what he does is he helps people get rich and have fun doing it. So I'm super, super excited to be hearing about how we do that. Uh, we're talking to James Bond. Hey, James I Bond, that is. <laughs> so are you ready to rock? Ready to rock. I'm ready to rock the boat for everybody out there who's in business or wants to get into business. We're going to rock the boat, everybody. Hey, let's have fun. <laughs> Love it. So we always start off on a good note. So tell me a story of success that we can be inspired by in your business. Well, I help people. I have these old women. I do work with the Small Business Administration. Uh, where I'll be talking, I'll be coaching, you know, sometimes 10 to 20 people, sometimes 300 to 500 people. And uh, we were approached by, I was at a grocery store. You know, I, I do it because I want to make a difference to people. You know, uh, one of my favorite movies was Pay It Forward. You know, if you learn stuff and you've got good stuff happening to you, you got to pay it forward. And so we're in a grocery store, my wife and I, and this old woman, she's like 91 years old, and she comes up and she says, your husband is so amazing. I was like, okay, thank you. You know, she says, no, he helped me and my, my best friend, this girlfriend I have, and we have this company that sells um, buttons from all, all around the world, from uh, Iran and from Africa and all this stuff. And we were struggling, and he's told us these two little things to change, and suddenly we became rich. This is so much fun. I'm like, okay. You know, so I proved to my mom, see, I help people, you know. But, uh, but yeah, just... It's helping tons of people, this thing, and then I, this, this trick. It's not a trick, but it's a brain trick that I figured out that's blowing people's minds. And there's people with, like, virtually no money. I've got lots of stories to tell for you and your fans, but of, uh, of people who had no money, and then they did this one thing, and so they got rich. And so, and so that'll be fun. Oh, well, hey, we have programmable minds, don't we? So I imagine that it, it probably works something like that, right? We just change something that we've been programmed that's, you know, leading us down a path that's not right and flipping it around, right? Well, it's like, and joke, it's like jokes. And by the way, Brain Glue is the name of my book, Brain Glue, but it shows you also how to create jokes because once you understand how the brain works, you know, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy, you know? Um, they're just like lots of really cool ones. I have this one uh, uh, mommy and her son. So I have these these women who are kind of religious. So I had to have a religious joke. So uh, they, I said, um, so the little girl comes up to mommy and says, mommy, daddy says we came from apes, but you say we came from Adam and Eve. Honey, daddy's talking about his family. I'm talking about my family. <laughs> so it's funny. It's funny, but when I told them that and they started laughing, then I started pitching my book and they wanted to buy the book. You know, it's just, it's like when you get laughers are buyers. I was telling you just before we started, I got two friends who are attorneys who are among the top, among the top attorneys in the country, and they figured this thing out. And humor is just one of the tools, but they, this guy was telling me, one of them was telling me, and the other one agreed because he said the same thing. And this guy's one of the top 10 attorneys in the country. He doesn't want me to say his name because he doesn't want to, you know, yeah. his competitors to know this, okay? But he makes the judge and the jury laugh. He tells them a joke or says some funny things. And when he does that, they're, they're more likely, he's more likely to win the case. Because if you make someone laugh, they kind of become your buddy in a way. Mm -hmm. And they want to, you know, they want to support you. And he said he has lots of people, lots of attorneys across the country who give him cases, you know, that they can't, they know they can't win. And he doesn't win every case, but he wins a lot of these cases. And in a large part, it's because he knows if I can make the judge laugh or if I can make the jury laugh, there's a good chance that they're going to want me to win instead of that other guy who's so serious. So yeah, it's just, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And that I'm agree totally. Yeah. When you're talking to someone and think about it from when you're on, when you're on the other side of it too, when you're talking to somebody who's making you laugh, you immediately just, you're having more fun in that conversation. You want that to continue. You want to, you want to help this person. Hey, that person was a really, you know, really fun to talk to. Right. And, and that's what you Absolutely. want. You don't want to be talking to somebody that's boring to talk to. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, but products, when you're selling products online, you know, if you can make them laugh while they're looking at your product, you know, then that helps too. Okay. So let me give you a couple of examples. I think I'd love to tell these stories. I think it's going to really excite everyone, but it, you know, and it's a, a mom and her son in Utah who have no business experience. They were watching Shark Tank and they said, we got to do something like that too. It'll be really fun. They both have jobs. I think he has a job. She doesn't. So she's his mom. And they came up with this product and with such a funny name and such a cool name that they went from zero 
to a hundred million dollars in less than two years. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to tell about that. And then I'm going to tell uh, about this guy with almost no money, he had to borrow some money from his dad, but he became a billionaire with the help of one word, one word, or this mom, a uh, stay at home mom who's, um, uh, you know, she has no money, but she figured she'd create a Facebook page. She created a Facebook page that so became such a blockbuster. She's got more than 5 million fans and she spent zero on advertising. So these are like fun stories. Can I share them with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Share one of them for sure. So, okay. So uh, the mom and son, uh, they're watching Shark Tank and they're going like, oh, wow, that would be really great. You know, like to have a product and to be on Shark Tank and suddenly become multimillionaires. And wow, that would be really fun. And so they're thinking like, what would be a good product? And so mom had trouble. She's like constipated and stuff. And so when she went to the bathroom, her doctor told her, that, you know, raise your feet six to eight inches off the ground. Like, you know, put a, a you know, put mm-hmm. something underneath your feet and it changes the shape of your body and it's easier to go to the bathroom. And so they're doing that. You know, when you think of getting on Shark Tank or creating a product that's going to sell, it takes a while. So it took about a month or so, but they came up with this thing and they went like, wow, this is really great. I wonder if we should, you know, create this little thing. We can find a manufacturer to manufacture them for us and these little toilet stools. That would be really cool. They said, but we need a name, the toilet stool. That doesn't really sound good, toilet stool. Are people going to buy a toilet stool, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they're thinking of, um, okay, well, what's another word for toilet? Potty. Okay. Oh, and I'm kind of sitting, I'm squatting. Squatty potty. Let's call it the squatty potty. Squatty potty went from zero to $100 million in less than two years. They were selling it online initially, okay? They said the squatty potty, they started describing it. They did a little bit of advertising. But their sales, obviously their income exploded, $100 million, it's not bad. But it just, it took off like gangbusters. And it's just, Fortunate it was so man. easy because it's, you have to have a good product, but tons of people have good product out there or a great idea. My wife had the idea. She was thinking, you know, uh, they should have called it the stool stool. I said, I don't think so. You know, the stool stool is not the best. I get, people would laugh probably. But, Squatty you know, potty's better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Squatty potty really works. But yeah, just uh, so I, how, so. How about this one? Okay, what does billionaire Richard Branson, Madonna? You're a musician, Madonna, and olive oil have in common. Olive oil has in common something to do with virgin. Virgin, exactly. Yeah. Virgin yeah. olive oil, very good. Like yeah. a virgin, Touched yeah. By, for the very first time. Okay, so that that was a blockbuster. Helped her become massively famous, and then. So uh, Richard Branson was a young kid who dropped out of high school. He borrowed some money from his dad and he created a, to create a magazine that was for musicians. Mm-hmm. And as he became, he started, he, you know, musicians really connected with him. And he said, so I want to create a record company. And he, he was thinking of a word and he said, Virgin, why don't I create Virgin Records? Virgin is a cool tool. And people go, Virgin Records? He ended up getting people like the Rolling Stones to become his clients. Mm-hmm. And then he eventually had, you know, now he people know him as Virgin Airlines and all that stuff, and you know, and Virgin Galactic, you know, to going into space. But he's got like Virgin Hotels. He bought all trademarks for all these different things just because of the word Virgin. And it's this is one of the things that people have to remember. I saw this thing. I saw an ad on TV. I'm sitting in you know my computer next to my computer. I've got one TV, you know, a computer in my room, in our bedroom, and uh, there's uh, Johnny Bench, who's a, a you know baseball Hall of Famer. And he's talking about this product called Blue Emu, which is for arthritis, anti-arthritis cream. If you have pain in your joints and stuff, you, you rub it on that. And he goes, you know, and I'm not listening. He goes, yeah, Blue Emu, it works fast and you won't stink. What did he just say? <laughs> and you won't stink? Right. From that point forward, I was glued to the TV and listening to what he was talking about. Yeah, Blue Emu, it works fast and you won't stink. But it's just, it wakes up the brain. And it's one yeah. of the things that people don't realize is, you know, you need to wake up the brain because most of the people you're talking to, you can tell them a great idea and they're kind of listening, but the, you think they're listening, but they're not. They're only no. partially listening. They're like, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not really interested or, no, give, you know, let me think about it or whatever, which basically means they'll never buy it. But if you can wake up the brain, suddenly they go like, oh, oh, that's really cool. I mean, then this guy... I mean, yeah, think I of agree. famous people like Lady Gaga. You're in music, okay? I mean, that's not her name. And they actually no. stole the name, you know, from Radio Gaga. And that they literally, that's what they did. And they call her Lady Gaga. So 
People can't even remember her name. I forget what her name is, but Lady Gaga is like, you know, how can you forget it? Dunkin' Donuts. His company used to be called uh, Open Kettle. And he created this whole idea of donuts and everything else. And it was open kettle because that's how you cook them. Okay. You're thinking logically. But it's just like nobody was coming and he wanted people to come. And so he asked uh, one of the guys that worked there, so how do people eat the donuts? And he said, well, they dunk them in coffee. Dunkin, Dunkin. Oh, Dunkin Donuts, D, which is alliteration, a repetition of sound, Dunkin Donuts. He's up there putting this, changing the sign on the on a, his building, uh, on, a, on his uh, restaurant to Dunkin Donuts. As he's changing the sign to Dunkin Donuts, the line is forming of people coming in. Dunkin Donuts, we got to check that out. And it's just oh. like, whoa. And you know, people don't realize, like, there are just so many great ways. Famous Amos, he didn't have a lot of money. People think, well, Famous Amos was like, it's turned into a multi-million dollar business because of the name. I mean, just there are these tools you use, you know, that, I mean, you know, if the glove doesn't fit, you have to acquit, okay? <laughs> Who's that yeah. from? <laughs> Johnny Cochran getting O.J. Simpson off from an almost certain guilty verdict in a murder trial. He was up for, he was going to go to jail for murder. And his, but his lawyer said, if the glove doesn't fit, you have to acquit. What I would have yeah. said as an attorney was, you, you have to love how he faked the glove. Come on, everybody. You have to love how he faked the glove, you know? Oh. But yeah, just, the, you know, it's just it's, when you know these, these tools, suddenly, you know, it just becomes, it just becomes amazing that, you know, trigger words that, you know, I mean, who would put the word dirty in the name of their product or their book or their movie, dirty? And yet we got dirty dancing, dirty Harry. These are blockbusters, you know, dirty, rotten scoundrels. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just I sent an email to these um, writers of major magazines because I wanted them to write articles on my book. And so I, I sent it to 22 uh, writers at, you know, New York Times and stuff like that. But what I put was it was my dirty week because I was into all the dirty the people who use the word dirty. And so I said, the dirty truth about an article you wrote. OK, oh, yeah, that'll catch their attention. Yeah, it did. It took two of them and me within 24 hours, two of them contacted me, said, OK, you got me. Let me get can I get a copy of the book? I need to see it, you know, but it's just That's it wakes awesome. up the brain. That's what we want to do. We want to wake up the brain. And when we wake up the brain where they go, huh? Because we have to everybody you're talking to is half asleep. And if you can wake up the brain and they go, huh? Then you have yeah. a better chance of making a ton of money. And I, I know this from experience because. It started as theory as I started understanding this, but as I started applying it to clients and then with the Small Business Administration, people come back to me on a regular basis and say, man, I changed the name of my product or I changed how I describe my product. And like, I can't believe it. Like sales are, you know, we become blockbusters. Yeah, That's why one I of the things it. I say is we don't want cash. I mean, we do, but we don't want cash. We want cash flow. You That's know? right. That's right. That's what we want. Well, we'll get into that in a minute. But before we do, so along with the good notes, sometimes there's some bad notes as well. And I like to normalize that because people do hit roadblocks from time to time. Actually, almost everybody does. Uh, now, I'm wondering, yes. what about you? Like, is there anything that didn't work out as planned? And, you know, how did you recover from it? Well, there are lots of things that didn't work out as planned. I discovered Brain Glue because it wasn't called Brain Glue initially. But I had an advertising agency in Montreal. I'm originally, I live in Southern California. I've lived here for about 36 years. But I'm originally from Montreal, uh, Canada. For those of you who don't know, I turn, turns out there's another Montreal. I don't know where, but anyway. <laughs> well, um, I'm, and, I'm in Canada as well. I'm in New Brunswick. Oh, New Brunswick. Oh, I know yeah. where that is. Most people don't know where that is. You guys are really right. rock. So you guys had swim, <laughs> or you can in the <laughs> summertime, not winter. Anyway, but I had an advertising agency and I worked my way up and won major clients like Kraft Foods, Timex watches and stuff like that. And I had the opportunity to win an anti-drug uh, campaign in America because of connections of people I knew and all that stuff. And so I came up with, which is, which is what we mostly do, logic, logical reasons why you should not yeah. do drugs. Yeah. Then I saw the ad that won, that beat us, and it terrified me for two reasons. It was, here's the ad. There's a guy holding an egg saying, this is your brain. It's not a brain. Uh, it's your brain no. drugs, yeah. This is your, cracks the shell and yeah. drops it into a sizzling frying pan with exaggerated sizzling sound. Yeah. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? And I realized two things. First is that was profoundly more powerful than my logic, okay? Yeah. It was profoundly more powerful. But second is it was emotional selling. And I was like, how do you do it? They don't teach it in school. I mean, how do you do emotional selling? I have no idea how to do that. And so I realized that somebody who understands emotional selling 
will make a lot more money and be a lot more successful than I'll ever make. And it's, you know, I have to learn how to do this. You know, how can you be in business and not know emotional selling? So more than 10 years later, I moved to Southern California. I met John Gray. And John Gray was telling me about this book he wrote called Men, Women, and Relationships. And he was frustrated because he said, you know, people would read my book and they loved my book. They said, this is the best relationship book we ever read. But almost nobody was buying the book. And so he got this crazy idea and he said, what if I change the title to Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus? And then just put references to it throughout the book, but keep the same book. What do you think happened? Just by changing the title. Almost overnight, he sold half a million copies and a million. I have a friend in my book, I say he sold 10 million copies. And I have a friend, uh, Steve Harrison, who helps, he helped him with marketing. And he said, no, you're wrong. I said, I researched it. He said, no, no, no. We've already sold more than 50 million books. You know, 50 million. He went from 20,000 wow. total to 50 million books just because he changed the title. Yeah. And that made me realize like, wow, that's a metaphor, by the way, because men aren't really from a different planet. All you women out there, we are not from a different planet, I promise. But anyway, but when I got home, I went like, well, this is your brain on drugs. It's also a metaphor, you know, I mean, because that isn't your brain. It's an egg that yeah. they were showing. Yeah. But is metaphors the secret to emotional selling? Well, I dump, I created this passion box where every time I saw an our uh, saw something that was emotional selling or even an emotional quote, I would put it in the box. Well, when I saw, uh, you know, uh, men, are from, men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and I started realizing if I figured this out, I dumped the passion box on my bed and I quickly discovered there are 14 brain triggers and a metaphor is, is, is one of 14 brain triggers. And it's amazing. And I started realizing like famous people get famous. I worked with, uh, you know, Warren Buffett's uh, team brought me in because he wanted to explode sales at a bank he was working with. And I have, because I'm one of America's leading behavioral management specialists, I was able to do that. But uh, he, has, he loves these quotes. He was, you know, he said, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked. What? <laughs> That's a great quote, by the way. And what's he saying, basically? Only when times get tough do you realize who's really capable, okay? But if he said that, you go, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, right, right. But if we say, only when the tide goes out do you discover who's been swimming naked, whoa. It's like music. You're a musician, okay? We know that if you can paint a picture so that it's really clear. So only when the tide goes out, do you discover who's been swimming naked. You got a trigger word, naked in there too, okay? Yeah. Like naked apes. I got a guy with a, a restaurant and he said, um, we want to come up with a name, that change the name for a restaurant. I said, why'd you call it naked lunch? He said, naked lunch? Huh? Yeah, naked lunch. People are going to stop and go, what? And then naked, you say, means, you know, means, uh, uh, you know, drug, uh, you know, chemical free and all that stuff. Okay, okay. But yeah, just I have this guy who's a barber shop, and he said to me, "So I want to change the name because you're into that. I got your book and all that stuff. This is really great. And what's a good name?" So I said, "Well, I don't know. Let's come up with rhyme or alliteration. Alliteration is a repetition of sound, like Coca Cola, Best Buy, TikTok. You know, gee, you think it's a coincidence that you know TikTok? If they were called the Chinese social media platform, you think it would be as successful as TikTok?" Mm -hmm. I talked to people. I was talking to my one of my daughters, a young daughter. And I said, yeah, TikTok is Chinese. It's off the Chinese platform. He said, no, it's not. And she doesn't even know it's, it's owned by the Chinese government, practically. Anyway, yep. but so, so the barber says, I'm sitting in a chair and he's cutting my hair. And he says, and, and the place is full. They've got like other barbers there and, and clients. He said, okay, he's the, the brain glue guy. So, I, you know, we, he, you think you can come up with a better name for our, our uh, barber shop? And I'm like, oh, yes, like I'm being tortured like they're picking on me. And I'm okay, fine. So let's say, what are some of the words of barber? What rhymes with barber? Okay, that didn't work. We didn't find anything. How about haircut? Oh, I know. Haircut. What's another word for haircut with, with the letter H in the haircut heroes? Oh, why don't we call you guys the haircut heroes? And everybody in the place goes, what a great name, haircut heroes, in the front of the place to change the name to haircut heroes. I have this guy who's in advertising, and he's, um, his name is David Bear, B A E R. And so I'm going like, as I'm listening to him, because brain glue, once you start learning it, you see it everywhere and it just works in your brain. I'm going, you know, you're in advertising. You know what you need to change the name of your advertising company to? He said, what? Bare Naked Advertising. Bare Naked Advertising? Yeah, Bare Naked Advertising. People are going to go, Bare Naked Advertising? What's that? And then they'll, they'll you know, check out what you're doing. So that's, well, that's how, uh, that's how the Bare Naked Ladies got started with their band. Exactly, exactly. Very interesting. People would show exactly. up. Like, 
I don't well, think they got what like, they were expecting, but <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. But if Eve Ensler, Eve Ensler wrote a play on Broadway, on off, I think it's just off Broadway, massively successful, and it's on women's rights and what women's problems, okay, what women go through. But she came up with a name that's so good that even HBO now is doing a a show on her, and it's called The Vagina Monologues. Yep, I've heard of that. Okay, yep. I mean, yeah, you've heard of that. If it was called Women's Rights, would you have heard of it? Probably not. No. Probably not. You wouldn't have remembered it because it's like, you know, I mean, I, I made a mistake with my book because first my book was called, I changed the title twice. The first time I, I called it um, Dump Your Half-Ass Marketing Strategy. But, uh, and I started advertising on Amazon, but Amazon didn't like the word ass in it. And they said, we're now, we're trying to stop swear words in, in our promotions. So, okay, yeah. fine. So I had to change the title. So they let me change the title, which is good because they rarely do. But I changed the title to a logical title, which is stupid. <laughs> and I, cha- I called it Sell More with a Right Brain Marketing Strategy. When I met uh, Jack Canfield, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, who fell in love with the book, and he's forcing everybody to read it and use it, he said, I said, you, you know, he, uh, he said, I hate that. You know, I picked up that book. I got so many books to read, and I couldn't put your damn book down. So I'm like, I'm, a, I'm just sorry. Can I get that as a quote, you know? <laughs> And he's like, uh, oh, on one condition, you got to change the title of the book. I said, really? He said, yeah, your whole book's about brain glue. You got to call it brain glue. I can't even remember. I want to tell people about your book. I can't even remember the damn title in so long. Sell more with a right brain mark. I'll never remember that. Brain glue, your book's brain glue. You know, I had lots of, uh, so many positive reviews, like 80 reviews. You know, when you get lots of reviews, Amazon helps promote the book. But I was like, okay, do I really have to? He said, yes. Uh, so I changed the title. Now we've got like more than 100 reviews and people love it. But when well, he was right. And because, you know, we are logical, most of us, but you sell emotionally. Zig Ziglar, the motivational speaker, he's passed away, but he was fabulous. He changed my life. I've actually, I'm old enough to have been in his workshops. Wow. But he said, here's the secret to success, uh, to selling. Selling is nothing more than the transference of passion. If you're passionate about something, I don't have to teach you how to sell. You, I mean, I can give you some tools to help you, but you know how to sell. You know, if I saw a movie I love, I, you know, I don't have to, you don't have to tell me how to sell. I said, man, you got to see this. This was great, blah, blah. And I'm transferring passion. Well, what we do is, you know, we come up with, uh, you're a musician, so you tend to be emotional, okay? I mean, so, but we tend to come up with logic first because we want to come up with a logical description. And then you want to pump your emotion into it and change it. So, you know, Kurt Cobain. Uh, smells like teen spirit. Ew, what is teen spirit? Now, one of the greatest songs of all time, right? Ew, what does teen spirit smell like? It was like a locker room, but you know, he understands. And you know, as you go through it, as a lot of you guys who are musicians and artists understand emotion. And what we have to do is, but we're taught in school. You were talking about school, right? School taught us, B, what's a logical, uh, how do you debate in, with logic? Okay. No, that's not how you debate. I'll debate yeah. with logic about how to stop taking drugs. And then they'll come up with, this is your brain on drugs. That's an yeah. egg. That's not the brain. <laughs> Sizzling frying pan. And it beat me because it's yeah. more persuasive. And that's why we have to learn emotional selling. When we learn emotional selling, first we'll laugh as our buyers will laugh, but we'll also make a ton more money and have fun in the process. Hey, Rockstar. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Work at Home Rockstar podcast. If you didn't know already, my business is Creative Crew Agency. We build websites. Now, let's talk about your website for a minute. Most people realize that at this day and age, we need a website, but we don't really know what the website is supposed to do. And sometimes you'll just go and build a website for the sake of building a website. What I do is I make sure that your website actually accomplishes a goal. Now, there are three main goals to most websites. Number one is to provide information and build credibility. Number two is to schedule some sort of appointment and get them on, onto a sales call. Number three is to sell something like an e-commerce site. Now, uh, when you're setting your website, you have to be very mindful that the visitor doesn't know what to do. And so you have to provide them with a roadmap that leads them down a path to wherever you want them to go. On my website, I want them to be on a free consultation. So that's why when you go to creativecrewagency.com, you'll see information about scheduling a free consultation. Now, for you, though, I'm going to provide you with an extra link so that you can get your free website audit. Go to creativecrewagency.com forward slash free website audit and schedule an audit with me. And I'll go through your website live 
and determine what we can do to improve your conversions and make sure that you're getting the business from your website. Go to cravecrewagency.com and we'll see you there. Well, speaking of which, let's get back to the cash flow situation. So how do you maintain a positive cash flow? And how, how have you done it? I mean, you're, you're selling a physical book there. So I'm sure there was some costs that went into it. How did you make sure that you came out ahead? Well, there are certain, you still have to get the message out. So there are two things that you have to understand. And the first one you have to understand is who's your ideal buyer? And this is, here's a question that most people don't consider, okay? It isn't just who's your ideal buyer, but when does somebody become an ideal buyer? Okay. I mean, I had this guy who was selling uh, carpet cleaning. And uh, so the question is, somebody already has somebody doing their cleaning their carpets. So mm -hmm. when would somebody want to be looking for a new, uh, you know, a new uh, carpet guy? You know, you know, when they're pissed off because the carpets weren't cleaned properly, you know, if you weren't yeah. pissed off, or maybe you can say, which we created a uh, trigger word. And I said, are you poisoning your family? And you don't even realize it. And I got him to focus on uh, ultra clean, shampoos and stuff that don't hurt because you got a baby crawling on a carpet you know if you've got like uh you know uh you know poisons that are coming up from the carpet or from the foam underneath the carpet you've got uh, uh you know it affects the child yeah and so we started doing that we ran a campaign using a trigger word and his sales quadrupled in fact the big he started having a problem and the problem was he couldn't get enough people to clean carpets for him because he had so many more clients than he could get he could have uh, people servicing the carpets but it's just, you know, the when problem. you understand, you got to understand, like, when is somebody, you know, we can trigger emotion, but when is somebody an ideal uh, a prospect for you? You know, I mean, I, you know, there are just so many things. It's buying a car. Okay. So when is somebody an ideal buyer for buying a car? Maybe everybody on your block or everybody you work with has brand new cars and you're the only one with an old car. Are you embarrassed? You know, time to get yeah. a new car. We'll show you how, you know. You think of the reason, did you just go in and get repairs on your car and then suddenly it's like $4,000 to get repairs and you're going like, oh, you know, for that money, you can buy a new car and then you won't have to worry about it for about five years, you know? I mean, okay. when you understand the when is somebody an ideal buyer, it becomes easier to to trigger what your headline is going to be, you know? Totally. Yeah, I totally agree. And and that's something that will allow you to set up marketing campaigns, focusing on that moment. And yeah, that's it's such a good advice. Um, because I mean, oftentimes you're, yeah, you're trying to sell to people that aren't in a position to buy. Right. And that's not exactly, exactly. You that's know? what you want to understand is like, when is somebody in a position to buy? You know, mm -hmm. you're talking about entrepreneurs. So a lot of the guys out there and gals, you know, you're one of two types. One is you're thinking of it. You would love to be an entrepreneur, you know, and maybe you watch Shark Tank. If you didn't, you should watch Shark Tank, by the way. But, and it gets you all excited. And so you're listening to this podcast because you're going to learn and get excited and get motivated. Okay. And some of you out there have a business already. You've already started, but maybe you're not really, you know, you're not exactly where you want to be. So that's why you're going to listen to this podcast because you want to learn more. You want to sort of get in the headspace of people that are making a ton of money. You want to figure out, you know, first you want to get in the headspace, but then you also want to learn the tools and tricks, you know, and they really help. I mean, I've got this, this lady who's, she's a stay at home mom. She has no business experience. Okay. And she created a Facebook page and she has more than 5 million fans, including yeah. me. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. So what did she come up with? She said, well, I'm a stay at home mom. So I want to create a page. So let's see, mommy, mommy needs time to herself. Mommy needs a rest. You know, if you have kids, you understand this mommies. Okay. Oh, I know what mommy needs. Mommy needs vodka. <laughs> So she created a page of mommy needs vodka. So what somebody I know must have love be a fan and shared the uh, post. So I'm looking at a post. That's a pretty good post. And I look at it. Mommy needs vodka. What? And I clicked on that. Well, I got to check that out. Clicked on it. Went to her page. I liked the post that she has in her page. I became a fan. You know, she didn't spend any money and she got more than 5 million fans. And it's just when you understand this, you got to trigger the brain, you know? I mean, so I've got like some pitches. Okay. So let me give you three ways that I explain brain glue. First way is our rhyme. Switch your pitch if you want to get rich. Okay. I came up with your pitch, rich. A switch pitch. Switch your pitch if you want to get rich. These words rhyme. Okay. I came up with words that kind of relate to my, uh, what brain glue, what the book is. Then I said, I want to get a little more sophisticated. I'm trying to trigger emotion in buyers, a passion in buyers, passion. Oh, okay. Passion. What's another word for passion is desire. Oh, I know. Buy brain glue and you'll learn how to light the fire of desire in your buyer. 
Okay, yeah. so there's rhyme. Okay, that's one way. Yeah. Okay, but then I'm going like I gotta get a metaphor because metaphors really work powerfully. It's like you know John Gray, Metaphor from Mars, Woman from Venus is a metaphor. You know Jack Canfield wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. It isn't when you buy the book you get a, a bowl of chicken soup. It doesn't come that way. Okay, mm-hmm. so I'm thinking like what's a metaphor, and then I realized so I came up with a metaphor. Okay, and it's so you get out of your house and you're driving down the street. You maybe have all these homes or apartments down the street. You're not going to look at everyone and go, oh, look at that house. Oh, look at that house. Oh, look at that house. You've been there so many times. You drive past them all. You don't even look at them. You're, you're thinking of where am I going, okay? Going to work or going to a client or going to a, a fun place or whatever else it is. But today, you get in your car and you drive down the street and two houses down, there are flames coming out of your neighbor's window. Flames, okay? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're going to stop and go like, what? Does he yeah. know his house is on fire? Should I call 911? Is my yeah. house going to burn down? Like, what's going on? Does he know this? It wakes you up. And that's what Brain Glue does. Is Brain Glue recognizes that when you look at ads or you look at products, you kind of, you're half looking at, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. You want people to stop and go, whoa, what's that? You know, it's like, you know, it's like Blue Emu. It works fast and you won't stink. What did you just say? You know, you want people, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. How did I buy that book? I bought it in a bookstore. But you can buy it online. But I'm in a bookstore. I'm going to the book, 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 Men are from Mars, Women from Venus, book. And so, wait a second, Men are from Mars, Women from Venus? What the hell is that? Picked yeah. it up, which is how buyers, if you want someone to buy it, the first step is to pick it up. I picked it up and I started looking at it and go like, oh, wow, this is really cool. And I ended up buying it. Online, it's the same thing. And it worked the same with, uh, you know, uh, Mommy Needs Vodka. You know, I'm looking at uh, stuff on Facebook, blah, blah, whatever. And I go, Mommy Needs Vodka. Mommy Needs Vodka? It's flames coming out of her name. Okay. And I'm like, whoa, I got to check that out. And that's what you have to have is like, you know, squatty potty. Whoa. What's the hell squat? I got this great story. Okay. So Paul Tran invented an electric razor for man's private areas. Okay. <laughs> Don't want to get too much into that. But he wanted to come up with a name that everybody would know what the product is, but it wouldn't offend people. He didn't want to offend people. Okay. Yep. So he came up with a metaphor. He's thinking, okay, well, it's, it's like a lawnmower. Why yeah. don't I call it the lawnmower, okay? <laughs> and he changed the name of his company to Manscaped. We're going to landscape a man with a lawnmower, okay? So I remember seeing a, you know, in, in a store a uh, lawnmower. I think it was Bed Bath & Beyond or one of those. And uh, my wife is there. and it, has, it says, the lawnmower with an arrow, and it's showing a, a razor. And I'm going, what? You know, flames coming out of it. And I start reading out. It's a shaver for man's private. So I never bought one. Let me start there, okay? If I bought one, I wouldn't share it with my buddies, okay? So let's start there, okay? Yeah. I but I would share this. I would call a buddy and say, hey, guess what I just bought? What? The lawnmower. Oh, you have to mow your lawn? No, no, no. It's from shaving man's private areas. Are you kidding? And then he'd call and tell his girlfriend, hey, Mary, guess what James just bought? The lawnmower. He needs to mow his lawn. No, no, no. He shaved you know, you'd share it with word of mouth and you'd laugh That's like it's funny, right? Way over a hundred million dollars with this product because of the name. If he called yeah. it the private lawnmower, the private to shaver or something, you think it would be as successful as a lawnmower? No, mm-hmm. because flames come out of his ads. The lawnmower? What the heck? You know, right. so how would you like this? How would you like to invent a product, invent this incredible product, and someone you hate steals it from you? And they make a fortune while you starve to death. Would you like that? Uh. <laughs> okay. So how's this? Okay. So Post Cereals competes with Kellogg's. Yeah. Okay. And so the head of Post Cereals wants to come up with a really cool product that's totally different from Post Cereals that they can like really laugh and have a make a fortune. So he came up with this idea that was this little this cake that has jelly inside it. You know, raspberry, strawberry, blueberries inside it. Jelly that you put it in a toaster, and when it comes out of the toaster, it's nice and warm, and you have this nice warm cake. And yeah, he decides to call it Country Squares. He decided yep. to call it Country Squares. So at three months before he launched it, he started promoting it to the media, say, we got this new product that's coming out in three months called Country Squares, and here's what it is. The head of Kellogg's looked at it and went, oh, my, we got to, guys, you got all the guys from the company. We have to, I want you to figure out how to make that, okay? We're going to make that. And then we have to come up with a name. So the first name, the first thing we have to think of is it pops out of the toaster. It's I call it sense eliter- uh, sense elevation. You know, my like uh, you know smells like Teen Spirit, like or plop yeah. plop fizz fizz. Oh, what a relief it is! Yeah, it pops out of the toaster. So let's have pop in it, okay? Back then, uh, Andy Warhol was really famous as a pop artist, so everybody knew the name pop art. 
which is I call this anchoring, where you're taking something that's already uh, in their mind and you're, apl- you're applying it to your product. So okay. he says, pop art, pop tart. Let's call it pop tarts. He launched it, of course, one week before Kellogg, uh, before Post launched their country squares. One week before, okay? Sold wow. out. They, it's the biggest selling product that Kellogg's has ever had, okay? Wow. Sold out like crazy. And he had to run apologies in newspapers and magazines saying, we are so sorry we ran out of product. There's so many of you love this. But hold on just for a few days where more is going to be available. Nobody bought country squares. They waited for Pop-Tarts to become available. Pop-Tarts became the largest selling product that Kellogg's ever had. And Country Squares post tried promoting it for six months. They eventually stopped and dropped it because nobody was buying Country Squares. Everyone was buying Pop-Tarts. All because of the name. Because the name was like Pop-Tarts? What's that? Whoa, that's brand. Pops out of the toaster. Cool. I want to get that. Let's check that out. Amazing. 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 What, what, such great stories. Okay. We got we to gotta wrap this up, though. So it's, it's time for your guest solo. So tell me what's exciting in your business right now. Uh, people giving me feedback on Brain Glue. <laughs> to yeah. me, that's so much fun. I mean, I just, you know, I, I believe in, in the movie Pay It Forward. You know, and it's, you know, I mean, I've learned this. I've applied this. I've made, you know, I've made a lot of money from this over seven figures. Not from the book. But I mean, from applying this yeah. you know, before the book even. And then it helped a lot of other people. But yeah, just send me feedback. If you get the book, if you're in business and or you want to get into business and you don't have this book, you have a massive, or you don't understand Brainglue, you have a massive disadvantage. And even if you don't buy the book, at least go to Amazon and check out the book. You know, Amazon lets you have uh, like access, access to free parts of it. Yeah. And yeah, when you understand this, you start to understand, oh, this is the trigger that makes, you know, makes people rich, actually. It's really lots of fun, but yeah, just getting feedback from people is just so exciting. I mean, it's just, it, it's exciting. So we can get the book on Amazon. Is it in stores too? Like, can you get a physical? Yeah. 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 It's in stores too. And it's they have physical books. There's like, you know, there's an audio book. So if you want to, you can actually listen to oh, part wow. of the audio book. So it's really cool. I, I don't say it. So you don't get to listen to my voice. You get to listen to this really cool guy, Johnny Unitas. <laughs> I don't know if that's his real name, but it's memorable because Johnny Unitas was a football player, wasn't he? But anyway, but Johnny Unitas is fat. He's hilarious when people listen to it. You know, so listen to some of that, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Great. Now, do you still do work with clients? Like, are, are you are you for hire as well? Uh, I do some. I do some. I mean, people, you know, come to me and say, can you help me with this or that or whatever else? Says, yeah. I mean, you can't not when it's just so much fun, you know, yeah. to do this. But I focus on the marketing side, too. That's why I do lots of work with the U.S. Small Business Administration. Uh, we have like really, you know, filled up uh, workshops and stuff. It's really fun. Because, so how do we yeah, find out more then? If you go to yesbrainglue.com, it will actually have lots of information on that. Uh, but I'm also at jbond at fasterbuyer.com, you know, because faster buyer, that's what you want, a faster buyer. But jbond at fasterbuyer.com, if you had questions, I could bet you could bounce ideas off me. But definitely, you know, even if you don't buy the book, hopefully you buy the book, okay? I think you're going to love the book. People <laughs> love it. And it just, it really, it's, and I, and I was telling you, Tim, before we just got on, that this guy told me that he was trying to date this girl and she wouldn't date him. And he actually used some of the techniques from Brain Glue. And she's, he's suddenly on his second date with her. He said, Love this it. works for dates because it's about persuasion. It's not just about, you know, persuasion and selling. is selling your ideas. Selling isn't just about selling products. But you definitely, if you're in business or want to get in business, you want to know how to sell your products. But often you want to sell your idea. And an idea will be, you know, will be, you know, this shows you how to do that, which is really, really amazing. Wow. Awesome. Well, this has been a ton of fun rocking out with you today, James. Thank you so much. Oh, Tim, thank you for having me. You just, I love, love, love your podcast. And I was just uh, so, you know, so uh, delighted to be on your podcast. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And to the listeners, make sure you subscribe, rate, and comment. We'll see you next time with the Work at Home Rockstar Podcast.